Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well, we're going to talk about overall equipment effectiveness, of course something that we like to shorten to OEE. It is a measure of how well you're using that two million pound plant that you've just paid for and what we're going to talk about is what OEE is, how it's calculated and how you should calculate it to be correct essentially. So how to use this correctly. OEE really is a measure of opportunity and that's the way it should be viewed. It should be viewed as a measure of opportunity. It should not be viewed as a measure of efficiency, which it sometimes is uh, viewed as a measure of efficiency. And like lots of lean measures, it is also a measure of perfection because it is only if you hit perfection that you can achieve 100% OEE. If you're achieving 100% OEE or above, you're measuring your OEE completely wrong. So let's take a look at how the OEE calculation will be done. So the first thing to think about is how many hours do you man the machine for? So let's assume that we have a machine that is manned for eight hours and we're also going to assume that the machine can cycle at 100 parts per hour. So if we look at perfection, what would perfection mean? Well at the end of the eight hours, if you'd made 800 pieces, you would get 100% OEE. Now what OEE does, it accounts for every loss from that 800, and I mean every single loss. I, I was looking at this subject recently and someone was saying that one of the things you should take out of this is the planned maintenance. Well no, because if you take the planned maintenance out of that eight hours, if you say well actually uh, I've only really got it for seven hours because we spend an hour maintaining the equipment, what you're doing is you're, you're missing the possibility that there's an opportunity for another hour's worth of production. Because of course, if you do the planned maintenance out of hours, maybe there's a shed load more money to be made by just putting on slightly different maintenance shift patterns, etc. So we are not going to take the planned maintenance out of this. So we are going to measure everything now that degrades this 800 pieces. And the first thing we measure is the maintenance side of things. So we are going to measure, first of all, the availability of the plant. In other words, was the green light on the machine? How well is your maintenance doing? And of course, the losses that would be accounted for here would be planned maintenance, as I've already stated, obviously unplanned maintenance, would come into this category. Small breakdowns and stoppages would come into this uh, category. So, in other words, the green light isn't on, you're having to fiddle with a sensor, change a sensor, small little breakdowns and things like that. That would be a degradation of the hours that the machine was available. So let's say that we ran this machine for eight hours, and during the eight hours, we lost one hour for availability. Okay, so there's the first loss. Now then, of course what we've now got is just a window of seven hours. So now we're going to ask the question, well how well did we use the seven hours worth of available time on the machine? So now we take the seven hours and now this is about performance and again all losses all losses are going to be taken into account here so what would the losses be typically so these typically are first of all let's just put this up here this is maintenance type losses planned unplanned typically they're the losses that you would 
So the green light's not on. So that relates to the maintenance process that you're applying to your equipment. The second loss then is performance. Now of course this is things like changeovers. If you spend too much time changing the machine over, what else could this be? This could be speed losses. So if you decide if you decide to slow the machine down because for some reason you haven't got the machine set up correctly, you haven't done the changeover correctly, so you turn the speed down. These would be speed losses. Um, they would also be things like, um, I don't know, jam ups and things like that. Spell that correctly. So if you get a jam up, yeah, so again, because really what you've got there is, is the machine isn't set correctly. It's not kind of working correctly. So if you have a jam up, you have to get in, open the guard, take the piece out, reset the machine. All of those losses are going to be in the performance. What else might be in there? Cleaning routines might be in there. Yeah, so again, the green light's on, but you're not using it. You're having to get in and clean the, clean the machine up. They would be typical, they would be typical losses. And of course, if you think about this, well, people say, well, yeah, but I've got to do, I've got to do cleaning and I've got to do changeovers. And of course, if this was a measure of efficiency and you were measuring the people, you were focusing at the people, then of course you'd probably say, well, yeah, we'll give you an hour's allowance for the changeover. We'll give you, we'll give you 30 minutes to clean the machine down at the end of the shift. But that's not what we're doing. We're asking the question, how well am I utilising that two million pounds worth of equipment in the eight hour window that I've decided to man it? And then you're just counting up all the things that you lose in this measure. Now it's not to say you can get rid of them all, but they are all on the table for you to look at and say, could we make the changeovers faster? Could we make the cleaning faster? Could we make the planned maintenance faster? Could we stop the unplanned maintenance? Could we stop the breakdowns? Everything is on the list and it is up for grabs so you can see what the opportunity is for utilizing your plant more effectively. So they would be typical, they would be typical performance losses. So again here, because we've got seven hours, so we've got seven hours worth of available time, of course to score 100%, what would we be expecting? Well, we'd be expecting 700 pieces produced. And by the way, at this point, these are just 700 pieces. We're not assessing quality. At this point, we're just saying we did 700 pieces off the end of the machine. Because the last loss, of course, would, and let's say we, we ran it correctly, and we got 700 pieces out of it. The last loss, is the one I've just mentioned, which is quality. And then you'd be saying, okay, out of the 700 pieces, how many of them were any good? And you say, okay, let's say I lose 100. So losses, 100 pieces. So of course, what came out the end of the machine at the end of the shift? only 600 pieces. What's my overall equipment effectiveness? Well, it's simply going to be, it's going to be that, it's going to be 75%. Now that's the quick and easy way to work out what your OE is. What people normally do is they work out the pieces. So what they'll say is, how efficient was I here? So they'll say, well, it's seven over eight, and they'll work out a percentage, uh, what's that? It's, uh, it's I think it's eight, 88 and a half percent, I think 87 and a half percent, it was close. Yeah, so that one is, yeah, 87 and a half percent. This one here, I get 700 pieces, and I expected 700 pieces, so my, just simply 7 hour, 700 over 700, and finally, I got 700 pieces, but I only got 600 out, and you'd work out the percentage, work out the percentage for that. And then what you do is you, you multiply the three together, and the three together would produce, 
75% anyway. So you can do it by just doing the overall number. What was the absolute maximum I could have got out of the machine for the eight hours? How many did I get if I'd won by the other? There's your quick OEE. But usually what people want to know is the pieces. So they want to know how many losses did I have due to maintenance problems? How many losses did I have due to performance problems, did performance losses? And finally, how many losses did I have due to quality losses? And then usually what people do is they do a little Pareto and they say, ah, okay, losses due to performance, losses due to quality, losses due to availability. And then they might say, okay, all of my losses or the majority of my losses are in performance. And then they might do a project about how to get the performance, how to get the performance right. Now, as I say, this measure really is about a measure of opportunity. Because often, and I've worked out an OEE here, which is very, very generous. You would rarely see numbers as good as this. Normally, you're going to see 30%, 40%, terrible numbers you tend to see. And people don't want to see that. We love to perform at 95% on time delivery, 97%. We like to be up in the 90s. But what this is telling you is, look, there's money going begging here for free. Because let's say you have a, a, an overall equipment effectiveness of, let's say you had 35%. Okay. Well, imagine if you could push that 35 up to, let's say, 45. Imagine how much money you would make just moving it that 10 points because you don't have to pay for any anything else. It's just free money. And that's the point about the OEE. It's showing you an opportunity for free money in your equipment. So literally, you're saying, well, I'm only at 35%. Surely we can easily go from 35, let's say, to 50%. Imagine what you've just done. You've just increased the throughput of the whole factory by 40%, 40 it's gone up by. And you didn't have to pay for any more equipment, any more heating, any more people, any more lighting, any more electricity. It was just free money straight in your pocket. And that's why you don't want to give any, any allowances here. You are going to measure yourself against perfection. And any loss that from perfection is giving you an opportunity for free money. And that's why it should all stay on the table. If you suddenly do really well as a company, you suddenly get lots of orders and you're thinking we're gonna have to put more shifts on, we're gonna have to buy more equipment. Maybe the first thing to do is to take a look at your OEE because maybe just pushing your OEE up by 10 points could get you huge amounts of extra capacity. There is shed loads of money to be made if you measure OEE correctly. Now where does it go wrong? People start giving allowances for this, they start giving allowances for this, they start give allowances for planned maintenance and they start to say oh well we've got an, we've got an OEE of a hundred percent. No you haven't. You're not using your equipment to its absolute perfection and that's what OEE is. And if you measure yourself against absolute perfection there is an opportunity to make piles and piles of cash. OEE, measure it correctly.